Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm Chuck, and uh, as you know, the channel is Outside Screwball. And today uh, we're going to go on a road trip, and it's uh, it's worth the it's worth the time, and it's worth the. Okay, ride. guys, we're uh, heading on another road trip. Going to take you over to a buddy's shop, and we're going to uh, look at his uh, lathe. Um, and I think it's you're going to find it real interesting. So. Uh, we're off for a little road trip. Nice uh, sunny day in California. And here we go. Got the top off on the car. Beautiful day. It's about a half an hour drive. him um, we're gonna go see his lathe um, and when I said I helped him uh, one of my best friends from high school uh, West Bay Rhythm he's a guitarist in the in the, in the songs you hear uh, they coach softball together and he called me up and said can you help Dale with a couple of items um, and I said if I can help sure I can anything I can do well I machined a couple of threaded adapters for him and honestly, it was the first threads I ever cut, and uh, they turned out well. And here's a photo of what I produced. I had to produce both uh, male and females to uh, test my threads, and it worked out well. Uh, he needed metric threads, and unfortunately, I couldn't do that for him. Subsequently to that, Dale came back and uh, we ended up cutting gears on my mill. I didn't film any of that and I have no photographs of it, uh, but it worked out well and uh, we'll talk about that maybe a little later. So we're gonna go on a road trip and I think you're really gonna enjoy what you're gonna see here. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing. I, and I have to be honest, we barely touched the subject. And when he started when I first got there, and we're going to jump right into his discussion of the lathe. There went my lights. There went my lights. Okay. When we started the discussion, uh, as soon as I got there, we started discussing the lathe, and it, it, it blew me away. Between what the machine can do and the different adapters that came with the machine, and the adapters of tooling that he has built for the machine. Um, I, I, after 15, 20 minutes of discussion, I thought my head was going to explode. And, and I sat there in a quandary of how in the hell am I even going to film this uh, with any kind of uh, ability to show you guys. Well, we, he did some uh, machining for us on it, and uh, I hope you enjoy it, and uh, I'll be back with you. We're going to jump. Uh, we're going to jump right into him discussing this. This is an ornamental lathe uh, made by Leinhardt Company. This is a Swiss company. It was made in 1919 for the jewelry industry. And uh, there's not too many of these left in the world, I don't think. A uh, few people have them, like Ralph Lauren has one. Okay. Uh, some of the big watch companies still have them. Okay. Uh, that do hand work on their watches. Okay. You know, uh, there's uh, the, on the cases and stuff. There's still a few high-end companies that still use this. Um, but I think this machine came out of uh, out of so uh, South Carolina, I believe. It was stored in a barn for uh, probably 30 years. It was set in a barn after it came out of some factory somewhere back there. And Dale was mentioning here if. Uh, I'm going to try to go down here and show you, but you can see it's sitting on a wood floor and Dale was mentioning that they actually, when they move the machine, they just cut the wood floor out. So this is sitting on its original floor, which is uh, pretty unique. And then also something Dale mentioned, uh, just, uh, if you can see, the machine was cut in two uh, back 
in the day, right, Dale? And probably in the 20s or 30s. 30s. And that way they could actually, it, it became a gap bed lathe, and they could spin platters or something much larger, probably up to 36 inches. Yeah. Go ahead, Dale. Yeah. Okay, and this, what we're doing here, this is a straight line chuck, which changes rotary motion into straight line motion. And uh, what we have on here is a box that I'm making out of black wood. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to facet the sides and put a, a decoration in the facets. Um, I'm going to put uh, 18 sides on this box uh, that are approximately uh, 60 thousandths deep. Okay. And uh, this is, this is going to go in a straight line and rock back and forth very slightly at the same time. Okay. Twenty thousand on this one. I'm going to rotate it to the next one, and what I want these to do is come to a point okay. with no round left over. So just to gauge my, if I got the correct uh, settings, I want to do the next cut and see if there's a gap in between is what I want to do. So I'm going to move this over 20 degrees. And make uh, make another cut. Gotta back it up a little bit. Let me get this thing spin. There we go. the lid. Yeah, it's the lid. Didn't have it down tight enough. Yeah, so to explain right, or yeah, there's the, show, the, it's the two top, pieces. It's two pieces here, and I didn't have enough pressure on it. 
So we'll put it back to where it belongs. And hope we didn't mess things up. That pretty bad. You're not good but having I'm, somebody film over your shoulder. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put more pressure on this thing. I didn't know how much pressure I needed to put on it. So we'll do another pass here. As you can see, we're not meeting together yet, so I'm going to have to go deeper. Just want to go over this pass again. That shouldn't mess things up, I don't think. That's also why it chattered a while ago. Alright, I'm going to have to go deeper. So... But I don't know how much deeper, so... we go 10,000 here. Uh, you see we still have a gap between, so just at 20 more thousand. see right here that there's a rubber that is rubbing on these discs, which is actually moving the uh, workpiece in and out away from the cutter. And these uh, brass discs here are set up for inner or outer. If you take and move this tool post to the opposite side, the cutter to the op the rubber to the opposite side, it'll actually cut the reverse. Yeah, these are called rosettes. Rosettes. That's what they're actually called. So, what Dale was explaining earlier in the cut is that it's a two-piece. Uh, top and bottom there and it's not threaded there there's a slip fit there and he didn't have that top tight enough yeah. and, and it slid on him oh. but he's getting it yeah I think this should, this should be the last cut So you can see here that it's he's got a nice point and he can progress on to the next one. Yeah, I went hundred right I went a hundred and ten thousand. Hundred and ten thousand is deep. So we'll move back this off. And rotate it to the next step. Next twenty degrees. Make sure that everything stays straight. Put this down again. And now we should be able to just work our way around. Um, I'm going to go in probably half that distance. Should be okay, we'll find out. What wood are we turning there? Huh? What wood is that? Is it's that? African blackwood. African blackwood. Whoa! That's a little heavy cut, huh? Yeah, maybe that's what it was. So what happened right there when I yelled whoa <laughs> as it came <laughs> off is this belt's a little bit loose and uh, the cutter ended up biting and throwing the belt off. No yeah, biggie. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, 
time you spend and not take such a heavy cut. But we should be okay. Not taking any cut at all. You don't go 20,000 at a time or something. So, uh, what were those discs called? Rosettes. Yeah. So the rosette we're rubbing on is this guy right here. So you can see we got a bump, valley, bump, valley, bump, valley, bump, and then a, then a space, and then bump, valley. And if we come over to the, to the actual piece here, and I'm, it looks like we stayed in focus, and it's pretty small. But you, you can see we have a large space and then little ridges where it's bumping on the chuck, or on the rosette. There's three, it, three, little, bumps in three the little bumps in the center and then the large bump. And we'll see if we can catch it here on the uh, dial indicator on his next pass. Okay. Uh, see if the... take a bigger cut this time. Right. To start with, it seems to... The first cut seems to be... While Dale is doing some more cuts, I thought I'd show you some of the, as I kick the camera, some of the uh, items that he's uh, made. And uh, the, the workmanship is something else. And this is all done on that machine. You can see the bottom is all detailed. And then inside is all detailed and at the very bottom of the cup is detailed also. Um, just show you some other patterns that it can do on the wrong side of the camera. These are different patterns that he's He's done. And uh, this camera is probably not doing justice for the, the workmanship. Um, here, here's a little flash card. Um, with uh, a pen in the in the uh, tool holder, and you can see the, the variety of patterns that this machine can do. Quite quite uh, unique, and uh, he he writes his notes down so that he can actually replicate the uh, the. Uh, setting on it. Here's another one that he did and, the, and that slot through there is done on the machine. I'm not going to open these up. They're, they're too delicate. But again, that pattern that's on the bottom of that cup is also inside the cup and it's on the bottom of the lid also. Here's another one that he's done. Again, you can see the gap through the spires there is cut on the machine. 
And again, that pattern there is in the bottom of the cup. And a couple of more. Ooh, yeah, that's the way Chuck break it. That he's done. And I gotta check if, he, if I broke that. I'm gonna run for the front door. Nope, still in good shape. Whew. Okay, I don't think I'm touching anything else, but uh, I wanted to show you those. Now, here's uh, two more. Uh, this one's actually a top that uh, he made for his uh, granddaughter. And that's all. All those uh, pieces are wood, uh, stained different. Uh, the red is like bamboo, um, quite unique. And this one here is... Uh, this one's th this one's threaded. Yeah, this one threads on, and it's actually a ring holder. And the ring holder's inside. It comes out. I don't know how well that's showing, but okay. Pretty unique stuff. Dale also uh, collects levels, and uh, thought you would find these interesting. These are some very old, ornate uh, units that he has. Pretty, pretty, pretty remarkable. While Dale is still cutting there, I thought I'd show you. This is this fits the machine, and I don't know if you can see the plastic, but it's a tracer. So basically, has a tracer attachment that can be uh, mounted on the machine and this attachment here is for the geometric chuck that uh, we're not going to put on right now because it would take a while for them to set it up but it's another attachment it's another uh, attachment for the lathe back there and then we come over here. These are uh, attachments also. These were uh, these were probably built in the 1800s. Uh, show you just more flashcards. What the machine can do. He's done these, and he has the uh, dimensions all down to replicate them. Quite, uh, quite interesting. Circles, ovals. You can see those are ovals. It's an oval. Hey guys. Uh, well, we cut off there, and uh, first and foremost, I want to thank Dale for his time. Uh, to, to explain the uh, machine and to show the machine in, in process doing some work. Um, I really enjoyed it and uh, we're going to hopefully go back and uh, watch a little bit more with him. Uh, he wants to set up the geometric chuck on it and uh, we will film that. Um, hope you guys enjoyed and uh, again Dale, I uh, want to thank you very much for sharing your time. Take care guys.